Hello everyone and welcome to Till Thursday. Uh, this is a live hangout for language educators wishing to interact, share ideas and opinions with others. Uh, Till stands for Teachers uh, for Interactive Language Learning and uh, these are periodic hangouts that we schedule uh, to give opportunity to those members uh, in the uh, community to share ideas uh, like I mentioned and uh, also, self-promote if you have if you have a website that you are actively involved with, uh, you're also encouraged to take part in these online uh, sessions and share some of your uh, work, some of the things that you're doing. If you if you teach online as well, uh, you also are encouraged to uh, plug your your uh, your business. Uh, we'll get started here in just a few minutes as people come uh, come in. I will take this opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about some of the websites uh, that we're currently using. So I'm going to activate the screen share. Okay, this is the Google Plus community. Uh, this is the uh, community that we share a lot of our ideas, and uh, you're encouraged to join if you haven't already uh, and uh, participate however you'd like. You can post different uh, information that you find across the uh, internet. Uh, you're encouraged to share that uh, here. And also there's Moodle involved and uh, this is part of a research uh, study that I'm involved with. I've titled this page Professional Learning Network Experience and uh, this is uh, also this link is included uh, I believe in the Google Plus community and uh, you're encouraged to take a look at this. A lot, most of the information is accessible to guests, so you don't have to create a, uh, an account to join. But you're encouraged to take a look at this. And as I get more into the research, I'll be talking a little bit more in detail about uh, what this entails. But this is just a, an option, and uh, there'll be a lot of information on uh, with regard to personal learning networks and uh, personal or professional development as well. And uh, so you're encouraged to take a look at this. Hello, Rob. Just getting started here. I know this is probably morning, a repeat uh, for, for you, but in any event, uh, good morning. Good morning. And uh, thanks for uh, having this hangout. It provides me, as I'm not, uh, you know, specifically a uh, English, English language uh, teacher or not involved in that. I find it very interesting the way that you're doing this, and I think it applies to all disciplines. So, thank well, you. Well, I, I uh, encourage everyone uh, to participate. Uh, there's, there's really, if you have an interest in language teaching and learning, that's basically the only criteria. If you, um, it's not targeted towards a certain group of educators uh, or teachers. It's basically anyone who is. Uh, has a, a shared interest and is willing to share their experiences and opinions. Uh, you're certainly uh, encouraged to participate in these live hangouts as well as the the Google Plus community. So you may I know there are some edupreneurs out there who are teaching online, uh, perhaps teaching in in informal contexts. Um, so it really doesn't matter what your background is or your experience. Um, you're all encouraged to to participate. So. Rob, it's great to have you here, and uh, uh, these sessions are being recorded, so uh, once we conclude, it should be automatically uploaded to YouTube. For So, so for those of you who are uh, watching this recording and wish to participate in uh, the next Hangout, uh, you may do so. Uh, I think the easiest way to find our Hangouts is through the Google Plus community, and if you go to uh, Events on the left side, left-hand side of your screen, you should have access to the upcoming events and let me see if the computer's running or I might add on the lower on the lower right I think you have it posted there as well exactly exactly so uh, right from the uh, right from yeah. right and our next uh, till event is scheduled for this Sunday where we have um, I think we're going to talk about digital portfolios and I'm throwing these topics out just to kind of uh, provide a context or when I come across things that I'd like to talk about I, I post there but the idea here is that uh, if you come across either related topics or a completely different topic you're encouraged to uh, enter into the event maybe share those uh, those topics and then if you wish to participate in the live event uh, then you can talk about those topics 
as you as you wish. So the idea here is not necessarily me dictating everything that we're going to talk about. Um, it's more I'd like to get more community involvement and uh, again if you have topics that you wish to discuss or wish or want others to discuss uh, I think the best place would be to add this information here within each respective uh, event so then once we uh, are we enter the event we have more or less of an idea of some of the topics that either we wish to talk about ourselves or perhaps other members in the community want to talk about and aren't able to participate in the live hangout. So, um, going back to the main page, you know, regarding oh, sorry. regarding that regarding that topic, regarding regarding that topic that you've done, especially the uh, the use of a uh, world class, really important. I'm going to start using that one. Yeah, there was some confusion uh, on and, this uh, Sunday's just in, uh, when educators got mm -hmm. together to speak about things. Yeah. Um, yeah. First, there's the, uh, the the timing issue, and the second issue was, oh, you guys have fun when you get together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of laughter in the uh, video that you uh, you know brought up for a topic. A lot of laughter, a lot of cheering. Uh, I didn't know that that happened at uh, uh, educational <laughs> uh, conferences at Oxford or wherever that was. I believe it was at Oxford. Yeah. A lot, a lot of emotional support in there. I thought yeah. that was cool, but. But anyway, I, I, I think that's a great, great way. You've mentioned some other ways of scheduling the international, uh, you know, time zone. Day. Yeah, so far the, uh, but, uh, the like Google that, community uh, that you put in there. And more Sorry. specifically for this. Go ahead. There's a little bit of a lag, I think. So. And, and, and uh, I was just, just going to add, uh, yeah, I was just going to add uh, a, a little bit more uh, specifically, you know, uh, thanks for uh, guiding on those international times, I think that that's a big uh, that's a big issue. Yeah, the um, the time right. the so time zone is a little bit of an issue at this point. Um, I, it looks like Google Plus is trying to. I'm going to go back to uh, the events here just to show to show you what at least what I see, and we've had this discussion before, Rob. But I think it it's worth mentioning again for those who perhaps aren't familiar with Google communities or Google events in particular, the uh, when I set up a time or an event, uh, the correct time for me when I set up the event appears here underneath the title. And each of the members or those who view the event, I think theoretically this time should be uh, specific to local time zones. So I think ideally uh, when you open up your event, it should be the correct time. But as of today, uh, those times are not correct until you go and check your calendar. So if you see this link down below, if you click on my calendar, this will open up uh, Google Calendar and uh, then I believe the correct time does appear. So it seems to be kind of a glitch at this point in the system and, I, and I'm sure this is something that I think Google will work out eventually, but um, at this point I'm going to try to get in the habit of including a link to World Clock uh, just to make sure there are no, uh, confusion. there's not a confusion to the start time for each event. So at this point, I'll, I'll continue to do that until I see that uh, Google Plus has resolved this issue. Yeah, that is. I might, I might add that uh, it, it does work. However, you no one tells you that you need to check my calendar and then um, you need to actually click again, and then it brings it into local time. So it's a little bit of a trick there. It will, for instance, right now it is 6 a.m., and I think you began this uh, CST, uh, 8 a.m. Um, so you have to click through okay. twice is what I've learned um, to find out what time that means okay. in, in the local I wasn't aware of that. So once you do click or access your calendar, it does, uh, it does go to the correct time zone? in the event description yeah uh yeah and in fact maybe what i could do is, perhaps what i could do is a screen share um give sure. me a second to get it set up keep uh, keep your conversation going and then i'll come back and give you a, give everyone yeah a quick uh, i think a great thing about these hangouts too is not just the content which we'll eventually get to here in a few minutes but it's these informal conversations that we have these especially when we're looking at technology that's still relatively new in terms of, in this case, 
either Google Hangouts or events or communities. And uh, it's, it's a great way to really just kind of share and learn about how these technologies are evolving over time. So it's not so much just the content that we discuss with regard to language teaching and learning, but also some of the details or issues that come, come up with regard to technology. So um, I think Hangouts for me personally has been the best way to offer uh, a live event where these informal dialogues can, uh, can, can emerge and uh, there's more opportunity for greater amounts of interaction between um, the participants since when you join uh, you typically need a microphone and a webcam and then you're basically able to to uh, discuss and share and and provide opinions in a more open fashion. Uh, you might want to contrast this type of experience with a, a typical uh, either um, like WizIQ, uh, nothing against WizIQ, but um, that's a more, I, I would consider a traditional type of uh, broadcasting uh, platform where typically there's one presenter and uh, the rest of the attendees are more passive and this is kind of a different approach and when you join uh, you're you know encouraged to participate and you almost have to participate because there's really you've got a you're there and discussing uh, different topics and uh, so I think this type of technology lends itself very well to an open forum open discussion of uh, topics of general interest so okay uh, yeah and uh, well, I'll get back to that, but uh, I'm just having an outstanding time with my students in a class at University of California, Riverside, uh, with Hangouts. Laughter, giggle, engagement, uh, uh, thoughtful questioning, um, uh, you know, it's like a, a Socratic, uh, it's like living in a, a Socratic world of uh, questioning and discussion, and uh, it's just outstanding. But anyway, I wanted to get back uh, quickly to that uh, uh, to show everyone what happens and how you have to okay. click through twice. Uh, and uh, so the first thing I'll do is I, I, I'll go to the, uh, this is uh, the uh, 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 community. And uh, you'll see over here on the right that I'll use as an example this uh, till Sunday. And uh, you probably <coughs> can't see this, but I'll click through on it. It says that it's going to be at 8 a.m. Central Time. Okay, and, Rob. Uh, there's a little bit of a lag. As I click on that and I look at it, yeah, it shows up at first anyway. There's a little latency in here, um, but then it says uh, what people need to do is they need to say check my calendar. Now the reason I say that you have to click twice is view my calendar. And uh, what I'll this this goes to my own personal calendar, and if we uh, we look at this, um, we have to go to Sunday, which hey, is Rob, the next sorry week to interrupt. I think you me. you stopped the screen and share. It shows on my own calendar that this uh, till talk will be between uh, six Rob, and sorry seven o'clock. I uh, think you um, you so just clicked off your a, screen it, share. It, so if you could yeah. back up just just a little bit when you first opened up your calendar, uh, we lost your screen share. Yes. Okay, that that happens. Thanks for letting me know. I need to go back. I'm not quite sure why that happens, but uh, occasionally it does. So to look at this next event. Uh, clicking through on mine to f find out how it adjusts, how uh, how this adjusts. This is the click through two times. I have to go look at that next meeting when you have it scheduled, and it is uh, this one between six and seven o'clock. But that's for me, so it's adjusted into local time. I am on uh, I'm two hours before, and it does do it. But you have to know that one little trick is to click through and look at your own time zone. So, sorry, not an educator. No, good that's good. Yeah. Anyway, but, that's good uh, information. That was, yeah, takes away some of the confusion. It is there. You have to click here, and then check my calendar, and then look up what that what your time means okay. in the local time. 
Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, the, the video or the screen share that I see here is kind and, of blurry. Uh, so I'm no, hoping that the video, once screen it, share. we see the recording that... Uh, Are we there? I lost your, I lost your sound. Sorry. Did you lose <laughs> my, my sound? Uh, microphone on mute. Uh, oh, yeah, I was just saying that uh, hopefully the, the, the video, the, the image is a little bit clearer. Right now it's a little bit blurry on my end, but it could be uh, because of my uh, connection. But we'll see it the vid in the video when it's uploaded to YouTube. Hopefully, we'll have a, a clearer image. But basically, we get. I think we all get the point, and, and that it's good to know. It, these are kind of the the details of uh, Google Plus that are good to know, uh, especially when it comes to to time to time zones. But okay. Um, yeah. I I see, I see a note in the chat box. Let's discuss more about my class. Well, quickly. Sure, um, absolutely. You want me to go ahead with that now? Sure. Okay, I, uh, I have a very small class. It's a 100% online class. It's a Moodle class. It's visiting international students, um, mostly. Um, uh, so they're, they're uh, taking a class online, but they are participating in a, an exchange program. Um, three students from Germany that work in the field in the, within the topic uh, that we're talking about, which is global logistics, but the, the topic's irrelevant. The thing that's really fun is the way that the students, and they've chosen actually, uh, some of the students have chosen to be in the same room and at the same time, and they broadcast using one computer, which is fine too. You know, you can have whole classrooms. Uh, I would imagine mm -hmm. that could be in each one of these cameras, um, and uh, but it's just so fun. Uh, it's uh, you know there's a conversation. I'm it's uh, I'm not uh, I'm I'm not the know-it-all. I don't have to lead the discussion. They begin the discussion. They ask the questions. They ask the questions of each other. In fact, during the hangouts, they they look at each other and they say, "So why do you say that?" You know, that type of a, a thing, even though they're physically located in the same thing. And, of course, they don't have to be. Other people are broadcasting from other places. So I just find the, uh, you know, the whole learning method uh, actually better than classrooms. Uh, there's more that can be done. And uh, the things I also like, uh, this is... Uh, I, I've given some demonstrations. Uh, if I want to get into the field, or if they want to uh, join the hangout, you know, I use mobile technology, which is a, a different topic. But uh, I could broadcast and have conversations uh, from my cell phone live at events, and I think there's great things to learn. I give a quick example. I did a I did a hangout um, and was joined. Uh, it was a hangout of a local event here in California of an air show. And I was joined by a student from uh, uh, from Indonesia, and uh, he was interested in furthering his education. Had no money, so, but we had a conversation. So the conversation switched from the air show um, into how might I uh, find further education tools, and uh, so we've established a little uh, contact and relationship there. But. Uh, the classroom environment is very uh, democratic. So, uh, how many students do you typically have that sign up for for one of your courses of this type? Well, uh, this this happens to be a small group, and uh, the way that you know, because it's actually most of the students are international visiting students. This has six in the class now, um, so it is a very small group. Um, but I think the principles might apply uh, as well. I mean, I I have been in uh, fortunate enough to be in a hangout like this with three classrooms, different topic. It was on design and design thinking, and I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, to go into a hangout and and there was one whole classroom of about twelve, I'd say, at uh, University of California, uh, UCLA also from Stanford, and also from MIT, uh, three different universities, and, uh, and three different classrooms within the Hangout. 
and uh, they had a specific topic and I was more or less lurking, mm -hmm. you know, because they were really doing some fantastic things. Uh, and uh, lurk, lurking is the term when you just watch, <laughs> but don't participate. So do you, do these uh, students gravitate towards uh, what you have online, like your Moodle website? How do you go about finding these uh, students? Uh, these students in particular, the, the role of uh, UCR Extension is uh, basically they register students. Um, uh, I've had discussions with, uh, with people and that's, that's the key thing. It's a, right honestly, mm -hmm. it's a revenue generator for them. So they, uh, they bring people to the United States. Uh, that's a, an export for the United States. They bring them here um, and uh, charge them money. <laughs> And then they either go to classes in, uh, you know, most of their classes are face-to-face -face classes while they're here visiting. But some have found, uh, a few have decided, I have a conflict, but these are the courses I would like to take. So I can also take them online as well. And uh, this whole uh, interface, you know, it's, I believe that, uh, or actually uh, my mentor in uh, teaching Moodle, who is uh, an actual, he's, a, he's an educator, um, advocates being present uh, is very important. Uh, I don't like online classes unless there is an engagement. But now with tools like this and uh, the ability for anyone to speak up, uh, I think it's engaging. I feel as though I'm in the classroom and the other students are uh, you know, they really see the value of this so far. So do the remember. students, are they required first to sign up uh, to your Moodle website and to the course that you're offered? And then um, I'm assuming there's there's a asynchronous component. So maybe you interact in Moodle through forums and then there's a live maybe through Hangouts uh, contact. Is that, is that how you are working it? You have kind of a mix between both types of communication? Uh -huh. Yeah, let's see if I actually, actually I have it, uh, actually I have it open, I'll, uh, I'll just go, I can, uh, I have these great tools, like I can show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'll uh, go to a screen share here quickly again, and, uh, and what you'll see is this is, uh, this is the course that is set up through the uh, institution, and then I populate it, and I have news forums, and we'll look at this. I have assignments. I use a Moodle platform, and uh, and uh, I might refer to other information, and then the main thing is uh, the forum for discussion, and I uh, actually teach the students how to. The format is I teach the students. Uh, how to use uh, Socratic questioning so that they ask in, you know, uh, questions of each other. And it's the, I think it's a standard format. Post one, comment on two. Uh, and uh, that seems to be working so far. Enough of that screen share. So that's, that's the format. So the, the role of the school is to enroll the students and to give them choice. My role in this particular case, I also have my own Moodle page uh, that I set up. And the reason for that is our school has not transitioned and they're, they're still on Moodle 1.9. And I got impatient with that. So uh, I just paid the $100 per year and went through a, a hosting service and set up my own Moodle. I don't bring my students into that because you know I'm being employed. So I keep it within their system, and, and uh, except for the only thing that we do outside of the system right now is hangouts. And we do that for up to an hour for one week at a convenient time for all the students, which takes a little bit of negotiation. I also have working professionals um, that, are, that are in the class, and, uh, you know, they, they, can't, they just can't be there uh, Monday afternoon at 2 o'clock as a... 100% full-time enrolled student would be. So uh, 
you know, we have to negotiate a little bit and change the times to, I believe it's going to end up Friday afternoon. So do Friday you, morning. Uh -huh. but we can adjust. So do you, do you uh, record your live sessions and then make those available um, for, for the learners? Uh, no, I don't. Um, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I asked the students if uh, how they would feel about that, and 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 uh, they kind of felt like, gosh, then we can't giggle, then we can't laugh, then we can't uh, ask weird questions that might, you know, it's not as personal because we'll be broadcasting to the world, right? You know, or at least I think you can take the YouTube video and turn it into only if you have the link when you do the hangouts on the air. But right now, I'll say that uh, I changed my shirt before I joined this hangout. Uh, I'm at home, 6, six o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you know, so it may not have been the, uh, you know, because I, I, I suspected this would go live, I may not have been as uh, comfortable. Have you considered uh, recording through a third, some third-party app uh, the the video or the the hangout and then make it available maybe privately uh, for the students. I'm just thinking as language learners, um, if there's a benefit or if there's some interest or if they would use it, having access to the video later maybe to again listen to what was being said and um, is that do you think that would work in your context? <laughs> Well, I don't think that it would be as informal. Uh, I don't think, I don't think, I don't, I don't believe that that would happen. If I were to have, like what we're doing right now, and if they knew that that would be broadcast to the world someplace, I don't know that I would get the mm -hmm. same comfort level. I don't think I could, I, I'm quite sure that I couldn't develop the same level of camaraderie and, um, you know, freedom to speak up and, and all those things. You know, a lot of times people will, there's fear of putting on funny little hats, uh, you know, or cheering or making a joke or which they, you know, they, they, they do this. Uh, and uh, so I think if they feel it's going to be repeated, there's that fear of I'm going to look like a fool, even if it's broadcasted at a later time, uh, you know, for someone. Now, I, I can certainly see some value of the, Doing it differently, and I do. I well, I I say I do. I just installed on my own Moodle, uh, not the school's Moodle because they're on 1.9, uh, but I did install yesterday um, Big Blue Button. Um, but I have, which is a screencast thing. I don't know that uh, I don't know yet because I haven't really tried it with the class. Um, whether or not it would have the same level of uh, of uh, engagement or not. I may attempt that, but for right now, I'm very pleased with uh, using this. And uh, actually, tomorrow morning, there's another guy from a school district who wants to experiment more because he sees that he's a school, he's at a school district around San Francisco in California. And uh, so tomorrow morning, sometime between 9 and 10, we're going to test this out as far as a hangout. You know how this works within a Moodle system for, I believe, a high school. They're using Moodle for a high school, and uh, I'll find out more at that time. But uh, he thinks this is a way to engage. So he's their technology person, and uh, I guess he's totally booked uh, showing people how to do things Monday through Thursday, but he has a little time on Fridays, and we'll see how that goes. And my other, just sharing some other education types of experiences. There's a guy from Singapore who needs to educate a hundred hundred teachers in Singapore about uh, using Hangouts um, for all of their dis different disciplines. Ooh. Excuse me, I okay. have a, uh, an alarm going off. Can I, have I can. Can you hear that? Would that be bad to the bone? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to, that's good to know that you can hear that because I was thinking of interjecting that as a, uh, as an interrupter in my classes yeah. <laughs> to change discussions. 
just had that <laughs> that little fun play there. Um, but uh, so the guy from uh, Singapore, you know, and he's uh, most interested at that uh, at that school. Uh, we have mobile discussions. Uh, so he's gone up on the top of his roof and showed me all around Singapore, you know, from an iPad, uh, which has iPads have their limitations. They don't have the chat in there, and they have some things. Um, but uh, so he's a uh, he's a uh, technology teacher for teachers and uh, using Hangouts, and we've experimented. I have another uh, another guy. Uh, we got into a Hangout, and he's in Ireland. And um, he's teaching AutoCAD, um, and his students are located two doors down from where his office is. Um, but he finds now that using Google Hangouts with screen share and uh, one other minor thing where you can uh, do a remote is that he has the visibility to communicate with people, you know, not only showing them the tools of how they might do things, but also watching how they do it as well and in a hangout. And he has 15 students, which is more than the number of uh, things, but he's decided that what they can do is it would be better during these hangouts for them to actually share. And in his case, he is going to record. Uh, you know, you, you asked mm -hmm. about recording for other people. He said, mainly I'll have some prepared uh, things ahead of time, YouTube videos to place in there. But he's also, right at this point anyway, he's planning on recording. Because it, uh, the other thing is no student will have a, a cam to work with. Uh, they will have only microphones. Um, so they don't have to have a cam to join the Hangout. Uh, they only have to have a microphone and the ability to share their screen to demonstrate doing That sounds interesting. Doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, in your particular case, going back to your class, do you have or do you embed uh, Hangouts in Moodle? I haven't found uh, how to do that. I haven't found out how to embed yet. Okay. I'm on a mission to do so. <laughs> Let me know. Um, you know, I've uh, I've been I've attempted uh, in the past and successfully. Uh, there was a like a little app that did a group video chat called Talkbox, spelled T O K B O X, um, that I could embed, but I found that distracting uh, as opposed to engaging. What it did was it just kind of even though it was embedded right into Moodle, it would take. And I think they changed it so it's no longer available. Personal opinion too. I've embedded. Twitter feeds as an experiment, you know, but again, that was distracting. It took away from the, what are we trying to learn here? You know, it was more right. like, uh, you know, it, it just, it, you know, so I said, oh, that was another failed attempt uh, by an experimental teacher. So I took that down as well. And uh, how did I know to take that down? It was actually the people doing it uh, that said, this is mm -hmm. distracting. You know, they kind of sit, you know, it's like, so it wasn't just me that decided it. It was the group uh, that decided. And, and by the way, I think uh, my uh, mentor, uh, uh, Brian from UCR, who teaches Moodle, Moodle is, uh, he said, I think they took down that capability anyway. You could no longer plug it into, uh, plug a Twitter feed in, at least with the Moodle 1.9 that he is stuck using. <laughs> They're transitioning now, but great. So you would consider then your so, classes that you teach uh, this particular class uh, as a content-based course uh, with English language learners, correct? Is that a fair assumption? Uh, and yes. are what level students are they? No, I, I, my, my students. Let, let me qualify that. These are German students, um, and uh, they speak. Uh, they're. Uh, Ability to speak English is very advanced. Uh, in fact, it might be better than my own. Um, and there, because of the topic that they work in, in from their area, they said, "Well, what's really relevant for them from Germany is they have to. Everybody speaks German. Everybody speaks English, 
And then you have to at least have one other language. So they said you have to speak Spanish or French or Italian, but you at least to be considered for employment reasons uh, in the topic of global logistics, you have to have at least three. I have other students. One, uh, one person is from uh, Peru, uh, one's originally from Peru, and he's been in the United States for a few years and has uh, works in the field and has, I, I would say, advanced English uh, skills. Um, and the other student is from Kazakhstan and, uh, and is challenged uh, by language. So it's, oh, this is cool. I can kind of hang out with other people who understand my issues and will help me translate <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Um, just by, I think, by empathy. So would you say that you spend, uh, then, if, uh, do you spend more time on the content, teaching the content, or do you spend more time on the language? How would you div consider the amount of time that you spend helping the students uh, when you look at these two different types of object objectives, one being content, in this case maybe logistics, uh, and language learning? Uh, I think that, uh, well, uh, most of the course, aside from an hour for me, is done uh, because it's 100% online. Most of the course is uh, asynchronous learning. Uh, they are learning independently, um, and I am a curator of that information. Let's all look at this and then have a discussion about it. So, you know, because everything is available. And then I think the opportunity for international students to practice their language skills, it's not about, for me, it's not about them learning English. It's about learning more of a trade language, to, you know, uh, and uh, be able to speak that in English. But it's also, you know, the other topics of culture and idioms that are used in the hangouts. Uh, it's, it's like I say, my course is not about learning languages. It is about a topic. Um, and uh, they, but they do also get to, in the real world, you know, they get to demonstrate their ability to practice and speak in English. So the, when you look at the evaluation or the way that you assess the students then, is it more along the lines of content? Do, is there any language uh, component to the assessment process as far as, since this is a formal class, formal uh, institution that, um, that you're, uh, a class that you're teaching there, I'm, I'm assuming they have some sort of criterion for the uh, assessment part. Is there any of that assessment that involves the language? Um, yes, uh, the portions of that are their ability to communicate, ask questions in forum, which is the written portion of it, have discussions in a forum. So that's a, uh, uh, they have to read in English, they have to write in English, and then they have to uh, demonstrate, uh, as far as that's assessment tools. You know, I use uh, hot potatoes and sometimes uh, you know, use some other tools where they can demonstrate written language skills. Um, they uh, will also do uh, some written uh, reports, uh, submit some uh, reports. And I think, I don't know why I still do this, but I think I have a few, you know, quizzes. Uh, although I, I'm not a quiz kind of a person. Um, I do it mainly because some of the students enjoy that. It motivates them. Uh, and so I've included quizzes in, uh, and, and ma mainly it's, uh, the quizzes are, are uh, quite simple, um, but there are, in, in the topic that I teach, um, you know, there are, I don't know, five or six hundred unique trade terms that are used in international trade. What's Mercosur? You know, or what's the Aegean? Uh, you know, and and so it might be questions. Uh, I use Quizlet or something like that. Uh, 
um, you know, one of those little tools to ask the questions and give some quizzes. So, yeah, I have some portions of it. Um, that, that so do the students up. receive a grade or is it a pass, no pass type of course? Uh, they receive a grade. So I rate their forums, uh, you know, on uh, through the Moodle system on a scale of uh, one through five. I uh, try to present everything that I can as far as how to do how the assessments are done. I give them rubrics, uh, and uh, of course I I did the right click on rubrics and found the rubrics that I liked, and then I said these are the rubrics that you might use that I'm going to use for uh, assessing the quality of your uh, forum discussions you know? and uh, so I say let's have forums and discussions and then I don't really participate other than to say all right all right I, because what I want what this is a preference for me it's the uh, post one uh, here's the content you post something on it uh, the student would post something on it, and then um, two other students would respond. This is all uh, asynchronously, um, and write something uh, intelligent about it, or ask good questions of the other person. Why do you say that? Those Socratic types of questions. How might this be that? So that that's just my own style, and uh, that fits well into the school. I well. We're kind of live here on uh, Hangout, so I would be reluctant to say something like, these are visiting international cash cows. <laughs> okay, so they're coming here. And so if I, uh, you know, as far as this academic uh, rigor, you know, how academically rigorous is it, uh, put it this way, I have heard stories uh, of others that are just not engaged in their students and uh, they seem to do you know, with their students in the learning process, um, and it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, well, I just happen to be personally really enjoy uh, this, and so the, I try to make it as challenging as I can, almost to the tutor level, because I don't teach personally. These again, I don't teach, I don't teach to the the medium. Mm -hmm. You know, I teach. At the level and provide the support at the, at the person from Kazakhstan on this topic who has no experience uh, and has challenges with language and uh, people that have lived in the United States worked in the trade or the, the my German students have gosh they, they uh, they're third generation people within this field <laughs> you know they the Europeans in uh, they they grew up with it. Uh, their families are in this business as are they. So they're, you know, they they know mm -hmm. to collectively they know much more than I do about the topic. Well, which is, kind of uh, thinking about the way in which that you evaluate. You say you use a lot of the Socratic method, and you uh, expect that some of your students to ask each other good questions. I'm assuming to promote critical thinking skills. Um, do you? Um, mm -hmm. Is there ever a moment where the language part, the language that they're using, interferes with what they want to communicate? And when you provide them feedback at some point, however that is, whether it's through a rubric or maybe a comment or whatever feedback that you provide, is there uh, part of your feedback, does that include the language to clarify perhaps maybe an idea that they didn't quite communicate the way... Um, in, in a clear way, or is it just almost entirely on on the content as far as the way in which you give feedback? Uh, it's so there's no discussion content. of grammar or uh, um, any of that or vocabulary. None. Uh, vocabulary, uh, yes, there there are uh, because it's a. Uh, because of the content of the course, um, yes, um, and I mentioned I might give some quizzes on uh, English vocabulary terms that apply specifically to the topic. Uh, you know, the Mercosurs, the international trade, free trade agreements, and that has to do with the topic that might not be, you know, 
a free trade agreement might not be the same in um, the Spanish. Of course, you, would, you mm -hmm. wouldn't say free trade agreement as an example. So yes, I, uh, if they express it in uh, a language outside of the uh, English language, and I say, I don't, you know, good comment. I don't understand what you're okay, saying. Okay, and the rubric that you <laughs> use, is it a holistic type of rubric or more of an analytical uh, rubric where you have different criterion, uh, maybe on the left side of the left column, and you have uh, descriptors across for each criterion? Uh, I have descriptors across for, you know, it's okay. on a one to four scale. And, uh, and I have a choice, uh, you know, it was a right click rubrics, uh, rubrics for uh, education. And the first one I found is a local college here who had set up uh, 40 different, 30 or 40 different uh, rubrics that are used. Um, and I said, for this time, for the, this group, this is the rubric I want to use. And so I might explain that. And then it says, I will, I will do this. So I might adjust that, which rubric to use based on, you know, what the... Yeah. Uh, so the, in the rubric that you're using, the analytical rubric that you're using, they're each, all the criteria that you're using is all related to content, and there's no language in the criterion in the rubric, correct? Okay. Is that's this... correct. Go ahead. Uh... Yeah, or I might have to go back and to think about whether or not the rubric actually addresses language. I might have to think and reflect, or I'm sure that it does. I'm just not sure. Yeah, how. just curious. Yeah, and yeah. I, it's it, these are all this is all good information to share because I think, especially with a content-based course, especially for language learners, it's um, I think it's. Um, important and necessary to find that balance, right? To find the balance between uh, the content and the way we assess content and the way we assess language or, you know, and I think that's why I'm asking a lot of these questions. It's very interesting, these types of courses, and I think it's a great way to learn a language. Um, but I, I think it's helpful to have an idea or share these ideas because there are a lot of different ways. There's an infinite number of ways you can uh, approach uh, right. These types of courses um, are these particular courses that you teach. You know, I might for, uh, um, all students, or are these specific courses for language learners? Uh, they are for not only they're not only for visiting international students, but they are for working professionals to receive uh, certificates badges, so to speak, um, continuing education, life skills. Um, so as an example, these courses are also opened up and I have, you know, for example, uh, uh, I have a student, the one from Peru who works within the field and he needs one more credit to get a bachelor's degree uh, from a different university and uh, he asked for permission to, so that he could finish up uh, he's asking for this last credit, uh, this last course to finish up as an elective. He's going to apply this to enable him to uh, to graduate. You know, on those rubrics, uh, I thought mm -hmm. I'd do a quick screen share here, and uh, this might just by showing the different types of rubrics. Uh, yes, I might use case study rubrics. Uh, I might use critical thinking. Ethics, functional knowledge questions, global awareness, uh, oral communication rubrics, uh, peer evaluations, people skills, any of these. Even, uh, I don't like PowerPoint, so I'll never use those. Problem solving rubrics, reasoning, uh, written communication. So in answer to your question, uh, do does this require uh, the use of language Yes. So you use a variety of rubrics, or do you try it. to create one rubric that incorporates different aspects of the, the examples that you're showing? Uh, no, I don't use just one. I would use uh, several, uh, you know, it's rubric of the week. 
and uh, that's based on uh, you know teaching to the individual needs uh, someone who is visiting from Kazakhstan who has a great deal of difficulty with the English language um, it would be great I think if she could uh, communicate orally written uh, you know so I might use slightly different rubrics uh, when doing uh, that person's assessment because you know these are just personal preferences. Are these uh, rubrics open to the public uh, or are they really, private? Okay yeah. you might want it'd be good yeah, to they're, include this they're link right in open. the uh, it was a, event uh, just to have yeah it'd be good to share that because I would I'd like to take a look at that. Or if you could also share it in the uh, event, because unfortunately the recording that we have here, no one's going to be able to see the chat. That's one of the things um, that I would like to see uh, in these Hangouts is when the recording is generated, that it also include uh, the chat whenever the chat's being used. You know, because I think there's a lot of good information uh, that uh, that goes on if there's back channeling going on uh, while someone's just talking. Uh, that that's also captured in the recording. So hopefully down the line, uh, this will also be uh, viewable in the recording. But but yeah, this is that's good information. Yeah, uh, I, I I think I believe uh, I don't know. Aren't these uh, maybe not out on the YouTube portion of it? But I I think that the chat is recorded. Uh, when you post out, we'll have to check this uh, afterwards. But uh, I think that these comments that are over in the group chat are also uh, recorded uh, in the Hangout. Like, um, and, and we'll check after we're, we're done here. I think that these comments will be available on the event itself. Oh, okay. Well, um, so it won't be. Well, hopefully, that's the YouTube. case. Yeah. It won't be part of the YouTube. Yeah. So, but till Thursday, language educator chat, even though it's on the air, I believe that this group chat will be also shown in the stream yeah. uh, for the particular group. You know, I've got one more question here before we tie it up here. We're getting just about uh, at an hour. Um, you mentioned that the, the courses that you offer are for basically any students, not necessarily just language learners. My question is, the class that you teach, do they divide up the courses so a class is just for language learners and then maybe another class is for uh, quote-unquote native speakers, or is there an opportunity for language learners to also converse with native speakers uh, regarding the same course? Uh, uh, yes, but uh, is it, well, how, how shall I say this? Uh, there's not too much design in uh, there, there's not, not, there's not a lot of design thinking that occurs in structuring the classes and uh, how much you know what do I mean by that that means that I have uh, some Asian students from Korea in some classes that have difficulty saying hello in a class within the same class with a working professional in the field of uh, discussion who is a native and is there value uh, yeah but I, I really do I have to take it down I start with a population this might be in a face-to-face -face class as well and I might start with a population and then what I have to do is find out what the individual needs are and then just make it a learning experience for the individual if that in that example if it is a Korean student who has difficulty articulating my name is um, you know that's certainly a different level from I'm not going to waste let's say the person's time who uh, it works in the field day by day I'm not going to waste their time teaching them how to speak language uh, but I will work with that individual uh, that needs to improve on language. So how do I do that? I might give some options and I'll say, if you're a non-English, a non-native, if you need language skills, look at this. Try to incorporate these things. If you are a working mm -hmm. professional, don't bother. Okay, You speak this language every yeah. day. 
So good. Well, listen, uh, we're all we're just about at a no, this is a at, at an hour here. I just wanted to share a couple of links here, um, and I included, in fact, all of these links uh, in the chat. So hopefully, they will appear somewhere, whether it's in the event or uh, somewhere in the Google Plus space. Uh, but one of the one of the um, links, and I don't know, uh, Rob, if you've seen this post, but there's one that caught my attention in LinkedIn. There's a community called the ELT Professionals Around the World. There was a post about a month ago that asked a very simple question, can a language be taught without teaching any grammar? And I think, um, you know, from our discussions today, your answer is quite clear how you approach this. Uh, but uh, I think it, this particular question got a lot of uh, comments. It's currently at 258 comments, and uh, they keep rolling in. Um, but it's a very active uh, discussion, and uh, I encourage uh, those who right. are watching this recording to also maybe reflect on how they uh, approach uh, the teaching or slash learning of grammar. And uh, the the particular question addresses teaching grammar. So uh, some of the comments are talking more in terms of learning grammar versus teaching grammar, uh, which again is a debate on all, all its own. Uh, but certainly I think it's a, a question that at some point we all ask ourselves uh, if whether or not if you know, we're teaching too much grammar or not enough grammar. Uh, what's the right balance? If we should do it at all? And um, but I wanted to share this link uh, because uh, it's I find it quite interesting. A lot of good comments are are being included there, and uh, wanted to share that. There was another comment I just came across uh, in my inbox this morning about. Yeah. I'm sorry, Rob. Go ahead. I. I I, I would add that uh, uh, what I, you know, to your point there, whenever you ask a provocative question on LinkedIn, and she's asked a provocative question, um, it starts a flurry of conversation uh, on that topic. Another one that I know of is uh, someone typed into a community of uh, technology educators or something like that, is this forum dead? You know, I haven't seen a lot of comments on here, and uh, and you know, he said there's a gave examples of it, and said there's been no comments on this for months, and as soon as he wrote, "Is this dead?" he accumulated within a day like 63 different comments. So I think the question is what drives you know asking the provocative question leads to. Uh, engaging yes, conversations. Definitely, absolutely. Um, and this particular question, there are so many different ways to even attack the question um, that it really causes, I think, everyone to really reflect in a, diff a lot of different aspects. And I think that's one of the reasons why it took off the way it did. Uh, but um, yeah, there's another uh, post that I found uh, just this morning. And really off, a little bit off topic here, but I want to just throw it out there and uh, not necessarily address the question today, but just to kind of reflect on that. And um, it's this question, in your opinion, which country is the uh, first destination for newly qualified ESL teachers? And so uh, this is, I think, this was posted, it looks like two months ago, and not a lot of comments have been uploaded. It looks like 23 comments have been uploaded. Um, but wanted to throw that out there as well. Um, a lot of these things that we talk about in our Hangouts uh, can also be addressed, obviously, in the community uh, as in the forms of a, a thread later on. So feel free to share your opinions, whether it's in the event um, for this particular Hangout or whether it's in the TIL community, in the Google Plus community. My computer's running very slow for some reason. I'm getting some errors. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I, I might, I might uh, add, if you wanted, I, I, I suspect, I don't know this, that if you went into your uh, uh, ESL community and you said, if you posed the question, is ESL education dead? Yeah, you're going to get some, you're going to get some, uh, you know, it might, it, when you're singing, when you're singing the wrong song uh, to the audience, it could light a fire. You know, that's but being provocative like that, and I do that. 
it's just I do that for fun because I like to hear the engagement. I would suspect, I don't know, but I think if that question is ESL instruction dead, I, I would, think so. That would light a fire on. Wouldn't that light a fire on you? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right. What a foolish person. Who would ever say such a thing? Great. Well, listen, Rob, we're right at an hour here. I appreciate you coming, stopping by, hanging out, and uh, encourage everyone who is uh, watching this video uh, to do the same. We'll have our next till uh, live session this Sunday. And I won't even bother saying the time because the time zone uh, it will be different, so depending on where you're located. But uh, take a look at the link. I did include a the start time uh, using World Clock, so you should be able to find your local time zone there. And hopefully we'll have... Did, did you change... I hope, I hope you changed the time to meet the other individual's need who, who is interested, as long as that works with you. And consider me as I'm not a English language uh, speaking, you know, or uh, I'm not from this field. Don't well, consider uh, me. We, I'm just a hangout. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not an. I'm not an educator. Yeah, no. I well, I, I ask you group. specifically because we set up the the doodle and we set up. That was the whole purpose: is trying to establish a time that all 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 of you could you know could make the event. I may have to go back there because I think Ben sent another message saying I had mistaken, thinking it was at an hour later, 1,500 hours uh, GMT, and I think he said it's now 1,400 hours. So I may have to go back once again and change the uh, uh, the time maybe an hour later. But hopefully you can make that, Rob, and others as well, and um, we'll, we'll see. Okay. And that's, and, and that's very funny. You know, with my experimentation, issue with that too. I have people respond and then they say, and then what I find out is, wait a second, I thought it was nine o'clock right now, and it's really 10 o'clock right now. <laughs> so they don't even know what time it is in their own time zone in the minute. You know, they get, yeah. there's a little clock in the lower right. Okay, corner. Rob, listen, I'll, uh, I'll let you go. Thanks for hanging out. I'm and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yep. Yeah, thanks for holding thanks. us. Very Take care. interesting conversation. I think you're doing great work. Keep it up. Bye.